How does it feel back in a suit? Feels very snug. <laughs> 2,000 holiday beers will do that. I was hoping we'd work out how to do this show with chat GPT, but here we are again. Well, plenty to talk about thanks to the Libs. The Liberal Party has taken very seriously the government's warning about steering clear of radioactive waste. <laughs> They've just got rid of David Honey in favour of Libby Metham. She'll be the sixth leader of the Liberal Party in six years. Should we buy a lettuce? <laughs> the leadership change will please headline writers but we're yet to see if it'll have any impact on how voters view the opposition. The shake-up was intended to reconnect the Liberals with its voting base in the city and give the party some traction. But the new leader is the member for VAS, an area of regional WA where there are more sheep than people, and she's playing second fiddle to the National Party, which prefers the company of sheep to people. You are beautiful. You are beautiful. Which is great news for Mark McGowan, who has free reign to target seats in the Perth metropolitan area where all the voters live, which will pretty much assure him a hat-trick of election wins. The leadership vote was scheduled to happen early Monday morning. Normally the outcome of these ballots is difficult to predict, but when your party room meeting can be held in a people mover, <laughs> it's a lot easier. Honey quickly realised the writing was on the wall, or at least on the inside of a nine-seater Kia... You can move the seat forward to free up more space. ..and withdrew from the race, clearing Medham to coast to the finish line unopposed. What happens to David Honey now? He says he's going to stay on as a committed team player. There'll be no wrecking, no undermining and no sniping. ..cos ousted political leaders are always good at that. This is one of the most appalling uh, things I've ever heard in our federal government. Medham's win is good news for Liberal MP John Sibmer. He's a bloke with a name like a Scandinavian motor vehicle. May I have five hour, please? And is now an unlikely power broker because he was an early agitator for change and, importantly, he picked the winner. Before he was a politician, Sibmer was a vet, so he had no issue with putting down a defenceless animal <laughs> that needed to be put out of its misery. She would fight like a chichuana. What do you reckon McGowan makes of it all? I think he'd prefer to go head to head with Honey. David's a wealthy, white, middle-aged resident of the western suburbs. You can bash them good and nobody will feel sorry for them. You're a first-rate idiot. Pardon? Imagine if the Premier spoke to Libby that way. Yeah, I'm sure she could handle it. I mean, she's taken on the clan. Strip Nick Garan of his shadow portfolios, which will do nothing to diminish his influence over the lay party. In fact, it'll just free him up so he can devote more time to stacking branches. Well, she's put the wind up Peter Collier. Who very quickly issued a very grovelling apology for the language he used in the clan WhatsApp message group. Nothing quick about the Nationals leadership challenge. Libs were done and dusted within minutes, but it took the Nats more than three hours to elect their new leader. I suspect because nobody wanted it. Shane Love, whose real name is Ronald Love, took one for the team and agreed to replace Mia Davies. You only put your hand up to be leader of the opposition because it means you have a chance of one day being Premier. But Ron Shane is never going to be Premier because by the time the Conservatives get the numbers to form government, Libby's Libs will have outpolled his Nats five to one. That's why Mia quit. She realised she'd be eating a shit sandwich for the next six years with no chance of a glass of champagne at the end to wash the taste out. Oh, panic attack, panic attack, panic attack. <gasps> the best Ron Shane can hope for is being Deputy Premier, whose sole constitutional responsibility is having a heartbeat and sole political responsibility is nodding slowly while the actual Premier speaks at press conferences. There are worse jobs. Like being the head of public relations at Rio Tinto. From the people that brought you the destruction of the Yukon Gorge comes a new state calamity. <laughs> Billowing backpacks, radioactive man! The search is continuing for the capsule of radioactive waste that somehow rattled free from a truck somewhere between Newman and Perth. The 8mm by 6mm canister emits an amount of radiation equal to having 10 x-rays within an hour. Well, that's not great, but it's not horrifying. And as the world waited to see where the mutant kangaroos would emerge from the outback... Rio got on the front foot and apologised for the stuff-up, saying it was taking the issue 
seriously. Yeah, good to know. Rio had the option of dodging this one. The miner wasn't in control of the cargo when it was lost somewhere along 1,400 k's of highway on its way to Perth for testing. Rio contracted that testing to Swiss company SGS, which contracted a truckie to transport the cesium-137 to Perth. Just a bloody nuisance at the least. The question for Rio, SGS and the poor truckie who sparked this drama is who is going to find the capsule first? The radiation detection teams from the Department of Fire and Emergency Services who will safely contain the threat in a triple-lined lead box or Max and Meredith from Mekathara. <laughs> who will likely put it on their mantelpiece as a unique talking point. This is going straight to the pool room. Right next to other historical artefacts. Well, hi, everyone. I'm Ben Harvey. For more up late, click the subscribe button below.